Hi everybody and welcome to Lecture 4 of Digital VSI Design at Bar-Ilan University. Today we'll start Lecture 4, Logic Synthesis Part 2. In this lecture we'll continue our discussion of logic synthesis that we started last time. So, just a reminder of what we've discussed so far. Actually, we haven't discussed too much about logic synthesis. We briefly discussed compilation, syntax analysis, and then we really dove down to the down and dirty of standard cell libraries with the whole library definition part. At this point, we've loaded our design into the synthesizer, we've loaded our standard cell library and IPs. Now we can move on to the brains of the synthesis process. So all of this stuff is what we're going to discuss today until we finish synthesis. Reporting, we'll discuss next time. So we start with Boolean minimization. This includes mapping to generics and libs, basics of Boolean minimization, BDDs, two-level logic, and espresso. Um, thanks a lot to Rob Rutenbar, who gave a great course on Coursera, which I based a lot of my stuff on. So the next stage in our, in our flow is elaboration and binding. So just a few words about what we're going to have happen at this stage, and then we'll go down into some of the algorithms that help us do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our RTL and we're compiling it into a Boolean data structure. That's called elaboration. Um, during this elaboration, we also do what's called binding, which means we look for leaf cells that are not uh, standard Verilog or VHDL um, primitives or, or, or commands. Um, and we look for uh, how we find what each of these things is, such as an SRAM or an IO cell or some sort of other IP that we need to find. We bind it, we point to it with our design. So that way we have uh, actually a net list of standards of, of uh, primitive gates and we have our um, hard, hard macros or our IPs that are instantiated inside our netlist. Finally, we go through a Boolean optimization and we try to do some, we try to minimize literals as we'll discuss in a few seconds. So the, the, uh, the resulting design is mapped into a generic netlist. So we have a whole bunch of generic gates that are internal to our synthesizer, AND gates, OR gates, and so forth, and, uh, but they're technology independent. So they're not in a certain uh, process technology. They don't have certain drive strengths, etc. This is the core of synthesis and been a very central subject of research in computer science since the 80s. So this is some, uh, a subject that has been researched a lot and there's a lot of uh, brains in it. I'm just going to discuss really a few points and a few basics that go into this. So here's a small illustration of the whole elaboration process. We started with our state machine that we drew up and we knew how to turn it into some uh, very specific RTL code. That was, um, we were able to stick it into a synthesizer and easily, almost straightforwardly, um, elaborated into here we have uh, um, some flip-flops, some logic, some other flip-flops. We also have, which I don't have on the picture here, some input ports and maybe some output ports that go from the design. So our whole logic was actually, our whole state machine was turned into these flip-flops, this logic, um, and these ports. That um, completely described our sequential um, system. So again, the registers were inferred when uh, our, our compiler went over the Verilog code and saw all the always at pause edge clock type definitions, it knew how it, that, that there should be a flip-flop there and was able to infer them. At the, all, all the sign statements and the always at star statements, it knew how to put these uh, combinational uh, bubbles in the middle. And the combinational bubbles are actually just um, Boolean logic. They're uh, um, truth tables that say, okay, we have a whole bunch of variables. There can be a lot of variables, which the variables are the different points here. So the outputs of each of these inferred registers and the inputs to the design. Um, and the outputs here, these uh, Fs, are the outputs which go into um, output registers or, or endpoint registers, we'll call them later, and the outputs from the design. So now we have this Boolean logic. And what we're going to discuss now is optimization of the Boolean logic. And the first stage is what we call two-level logic. So we know that each of these um, output statements in our Boolean truth table can be described as a sum of products or product of sums. Okay, so here basically we have a sum of product representation. Um, by the way, these different things have nothing to do with each other, they're just for the example, but we know that we can straightforwardly make a sum of products 
in a two-level logic form, and we're going to discuss how we can optimize this by reducing the number of literals that appear in the sum of products form. So two-level logic. As we said, during elaboration, our primary inputs and outputs, our different ports, are defined, and the sequential elements, which are the flip-flops and latches, are inferred. Okay, this results in a set of combinational logic clouds with input ports and register outputs that are inputs to the logic, output ports and register inputs that are outputs of the logic, and we can describe the outputs as Boolean functions of the inputs. So, just for an example, we have here our literals. These are our inputs to the design. Again, they are output either from registers or their primary inputs to the design. And we have our output, which is either the input to another register or it's a primary output for the design. And we have some sort of a two-level logic here where we have our um, sum of products that is a bunch of AND gates and a single OR gate that connects them all. What we're going to do in, in two-level logic is we're going to try to minimize the number of literals. So when we discuss the uh, Boolean logic, we count the number of literals here or, or the, uh, the number of times a certain input uh, appears in our, in, in our function. Um, in the case of two-level logic, we just look actually at the number of letters we have that appear at the, at the, the start at the first level of the design. So here we can count the number of literals and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten literals. So we have ten literals over here. And after uh, uh, some minimization algorithms, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight literals. So what we did is we actually were able to reduce the complexity of the logic, figuring that we have less gates or um, less complex gates. So there are many different structures that are used to represent the Boolean functions. Uh, computational Boolean algebra is a very extensive, very well-researched um, subject, and a lot of it has dealt with this two-level logic minimization. So truth tables we know, uh, we know about, and uh, we'll learn about a bit about binary decision diagrams here in this lecture. Um, this is something called a cube. It's another type of a, uh, a representation to use. You can do analytical things with equations and so forth. Um, uh, so two-level logic is what we're discussing now. And again, the reason being that we can take that combinational uh, logic we have between the registers, between the inputs and the outputs, and we can um, represent it in two-level logic and start to reduce it. So how do we go about this two-level logic minimization? Um, everyone probably who's listening to this lecture learned about Carnot maps. So Carnot maps for n inputs, it has two to the power of n entries. And our, uh, our objective is to find the minimum prime cover where we can put these, uh, these uh, covers around the ones for a sum of products or the zeros for a product of sums. Okay, however, it's very difficult to, to automate this uh, thing that we kind of do um, by looking at these Carnot maps and looking for um, the, the, the sum of products, especially once we go to higher dimensions. So here we have uh, a total of four variables. If we want to add a fifth variable, we have to put another dimension. And more than six variables is very hard to do on a piece of paper, maybe even impossible. Okay, uh, it's really hard to automate it in in the computer algorithm as well. That's why um, Quine and McCluskey um, came up with the first real method for finding the prime cover uh, of, a, of a Boolean equation. And there's an iterative um, um, process that goes and it can be done in software. But the problem is that again, once we get a lot of variables there, it takes a real long time to go and actually minimize a function with the Quine-McCluskey method. And um, if you ever did uh, any Quine-McCluskey on a piece of paper, it's very tiring. Um, so some Berkeley students, they were falling asleep while trying to solve a Quine-McCluskey exercise, and they really needed a shot of espresso. And they invented this espresso heuristic minimizer. Okay, so the, heurist uh, the espresso heuristic minimizer is um, the primary or the basic uh, tool that is used for two-level logic minimization. And it starts with the sum of products solution, which we saw that we can arrive to pretty easily between the inputs to our uh, combinatorial cloud and the outputs from our uh, combinatorial cloud. Um, what we do is we take three steps. We first expand, which means we make each cube as large as possible uh, without covering a point in the offset. Um, this generally increases the number of literals. In other words, we went from our solution to a worse solution. Then we have a stage called irredundant, 
And in irredundant, we go and we look for redundant cubes and we throw them out. All of this we're going to see in a minute uh, illustratively and it will become more clear. Um, this removes smaller, remove smaller cubes whose points are covered by larger cubes. And finally, we have a stage called reduce where the cubes in the cover are reduced inside. So uh, espresso is a uh, E and RR and another R that's espresso okay and so here's some pseudocode for um, this algorithm so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this do while loop we're gonna uh, iteratively reduce expand and irredundant keep on doing this as long as we're able to get to a better solution we're gonna throw out solutions that are not better and finally at some point we're gonna stop um, so uh, this is a heuristic it is it means that our new cover is going to be different from the initial cover okay it may not be or there's a good chance that it won't be better than our previous cover but it's trying in different dimensions and we can have many many dimensions in our solution to to apply this and therefore we're going to get this different solution every time and hopefully we'll find a better um, cover than the last time with fewer literals so let's see this in action and understand what i was talking about Okay, so we start with this SOP form, this summer product form, and I'm just going to show it on four variables because uh, that's easy to show on a piece of paper. Doing it in a higher dimension is hard to illustrate. Okay, so um, what we have is we have these four cubes here. One, two, three, four. We have four cubes here, and this is the function um, that we're, we're describing. A bar, C bar, plus C bar, D bar, plus A, C, plus C, D bar. And if we count, we have eight literals here. Okay, eight literals. Um, so it's initial set of primes found by steps one and two of the espresso method. This is just the starting point that we're showing for the example. Okay, we have four primes. Uh, we have here then the cover, but it's not a minimal cover. So um, what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to do the reduce stage. Reduce stage means that we're going to take these covers and make them as minimal size as possible. So um, this uh, cube of four and this cube of four, uh, they have some redundant uh, uh, or, or overlapping parts so we can make one of them smaller. So we decided um, by some sort of a decision to make this, uh, this cube smaller and therefore we have these four and we have these two. And again here we decided between these two which one will cover these two. Uh, we decided that this square will so we made this one smaller. Um, when we do that, which is the reduce, what we have now is uh, this um, equation describing the same um, Boolean functionality. And as you see, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 literals. So 10 literals, which is a worse solution. So we went backwards, in fact. Okay, that's not very good because what we wanted to do was get to a smaller number of literals. But bear with us. This was just one direction, one uh, choice of what we did. In our next, in our next uh, um, step, we have expand. So in expand, what we do is we choose randomly or according to some other heuristic, um, how we're going to take all of those cubes we had and make them as big as possible. So what happened is we expanded out this one to cover all these. We expanded out the one that was over here to cover these two. We expanded out these ones to cover these two. And we expanded out this to cover all of this. We arrived again at eight literals, as you can see here. But it's a different solution. It's not the same solution as we had on the previous slide. Okay, and now we're going to do the irredundant stage over here. And at the irredundant stage, we're again going to look uh, what we have here. And we see that these, this cube is completely covered by this cube and this cube. And therefore, it is redundant. So we can just throw it away. And once we throw it away, we get to three covers. And we see that in the end, there are only six literals in our solution and we arrived at a better solution and that was uh, the goal of our whole um, heuristic so remember that this was on uh, only four variables but once we have it on many 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 dimensions then um, every time that we do a, uh, a reduce expand and irredundant we're going to have a different solution and we're going to see which one of them is going to be best so that was two-level logic minimization. And the thing is that we know um, that 
most of the time we're going to have many levels of logic if we remember we uh, learned logical effort or how to drive a large load it's often we're, we're not going to usually have gates with high fan-ins in fact cmos is usually um, uh, limited to about a fan-in of four per gate and as we expand as we increase the fan-in of a gate our uh, propagation delay gets worse so we're usually going to have several stages maybe many stages of logic and not just two level logic solutions for any given uh, Boolean equation. So when we want to take um, this, these two level uh, logic and, and apply it, they, they don't make much sense because um, again, we're going to usually want to have multi levels of logic to balance the load and so forth. Um, and also maybe take internal uh, products and so forth from inside the logic. Therefore, we had to start a whole new optimization re regime, which is known as multi level logic minimization. Um, we're not going to cover it. There are many, many, many algorithms. Um, you can go to Rob Rutenbar's uh, lectures to see to learn about some of them or um, altogether research this on the web or take a, a university course in uh, these types of algorithms. But I just want to say that um, a lot of them are based on two level logic minimization and expansions of it. Anyway, there's no perfect method for it, all kinds of different heuristics. But let's see the potential of this in the next slide. OK, so we have a following logic set. We have. Um, all kinds of equations t1 equals a plus bc t2 d plus e t3 a b plus d t4 equals um, these terms t1 and t2 plus fg t5 is t4 h plus t2 plus t3 and f equals t5 bar now when we look at this when we want to count the terminals we count all of these guys all of the inputs to the different uh, gates along the way and so we can draw our different uh, gates and we can count and we see that uh, all together letters there's 17 literals so for example t1 and t2 are considered literals for the um, input to this gate uh, whereas at this level it would just be our inputs okay so we add 17 literals and if we play around this um, with uh, boolean algebra or with different types of heuristics that can be applied for multi-level logic minimization what we come out with or one of the possibilities we could come out with is a different set um, which if we look at it, it's exactly the, the, the function of f is equivalent to the function of f over here, but we only have it 13 literals. And that is considered, at least at this level of elaboration, as being a more optimal solution than the 17 literals. So this is what the point of multi-level log uh, logic minimization is going to do, what we're going to try to be doing along the way.